शिव शक्तुक्त यदि शक्त प्रभावित न चेदेव देव न खलु कुशल स्पंदी अथस्वाध्यंग हरिहर विरिंचादिभरपी प्रणंतुम स्तोतुम वाकतमकृतपुण्या प्रभवती तानीयांसुम फांगसुम थव चरण पंके रुहबवंग विरिंशि संचिन वन विरचायति लोकान अविकलम वहत्ये नंग सौरी कतमापि सहस्रेन शिरसाम हरा संक्षुद्याय नंग बजति बसितो दुलन अविदिम विरिंशि Having gathered the tiniest specks of dust of thy lotus-like feet, creates the worlds, leaving nothing to be desired. Shauri carries the same foot dust on his thousand heads with much effort, while Hara pulverizes that dust and smears his body with it, as though with ashes. Namaste. So the feedback I'm getting <laughs> from the first shloka meditation is very positive. Now, if you stick with that first shloka for the entire 55 days, I guarantee you're going to get a fantastic result. And I think uh, tomorrow or the next day, I'm going to show how to make the offering. how to cook that special tree uh, madura tree madura means three sweetnesses <laughs> so it's very very nice and very sweet and a beautiful dish in fact i made some this morning just to test the recipe so if you keep that up for 55 days and then in the second 55 days listen to the first shloka and offer sweet cakes uh, remembering to face the east then you will get the result of this shloka which means complete success in every area of life but now i want to talk about the second shloka because i know most of you aren't going to do the ritual <laughs> maybe you'll watch the video once that's about it but really you should download the video and watch it every day for some time uh, up to 55 days the second shloka is mainly about the triple aspect tripura tripura sundari uh, sundari means beautiful beloved so the tri triple form uh, the the triple or uh, triad is a distinctive feature of shakti now we talked about triples ontological triples and so on way back in the beginning of these uh, this channel actually 5 or 6 years ago and there's a lot there in some of those uh, early videos about the ontology of the triple but basically what it is is you can't have really duality duality is a misnomer because whenever you have two you also have the relationship between them so you really have three uh, so duality in the beginning is a subject and object but what's the relationship between them consciousness the subject has awareness and the object has different qualities and phenomena so then how does the subject become aware of the object through consciousness consciousness means awareness with an object so this is the fundamental trinity triple or triad and from this triad shiva shakti and their amazing transcendental relationship comes everything else 
So how does it come? Well, Virinchi, Lord Brahma, takes a little, little particles of the foot dust of the goddess, and with that he creates the whole three worlds. All the planetary systems, all the extensive subtle and heavenly worlds, and finally the spiritual worlds where those who attain moksha go. And they can stay there as long as they like uh, before they attain final, complete enlightenment. So these worlds are created from, from just the tiniest particles of the foot dust of uh, Tripura. And, and Tripura, you see, most gods and goddesses give blessings huh? like this or with the hand the other way, like down like that, you see, meaning a, a gift, a boon. But she doesn't do that. Her feet are so powerful that simply by her feet alone, she gives all the blessings. And you see, for example, in the opening of the video, at her feet is the Sri Chakra, uh, actually the Sri Yantra in two dimensions. And when it's expanded in the third dimension, it becomes the Sri Chakra. Here's a shot of it. So what is this Sri Chakra? Well, in one sense, it's the transcendental city, the kingdom of the goddess, her castle, her fort, from where she rules the cosmos. But in another sense, it's a diagram, an ontological key to the whole Vedic cosmology. It's very deep. I mean, I could do a whole series, a very extensive series, just on the Sri Yantra alone. But for now, just take it that the Sri Yantra is the feet of the goddess. And by having the Sri Yantra on your altar and offering puja to it, then you get all kinds of incredible benefits. So what are those benefits? Well, each sloka of the Saundarya Lahari uh, mentions one of these benefits. And the benefit of the first shloka is victory or success in every area of life. And then the second shloka gives the result of attracting the whole world. Huh? Because what is, first of all, what does Saundarya Lahari mean? Well, Saundarya means beauty. Not just ordinary physical beauty, but the kind of beauty that doesn't fade. Transcendental or spiritual beauty. And lahari means, well, it can be translated an ocean or a wave, but I think it's really a tsunami. <laughs> if you've ever seen a, a video of a tsunami, the water comes and it just keeps on coming. <laughs> it doesn't let up. So that's the way <laughs> that's the way it is with her too. You begin to worship her and this worship, this consciousness, this bhakti opens up into a world of beauty inside. I mean, you can't believe it sometimes. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's the most amazing thing because it never ends. It just keeps getting better and better. It's like, how is this possible? <laughs> well, it's possible because she has all the potencies of Shiva. So this world is really her. You can't see it because your eyes are covered with her maya, her illusion. But actually it's her. She's engineering everything. She's doing everything. The various demigods are simply her limbs, her fingers and toes, huh? doing the work. So Brahma, Vishnu, and uh, Rudra, the Shiva, form of Shiva in the material world, 
are simply her agents. And so it's stated here that Vrinshi, Brahma, creates the, uh, the worlds, leaving nothing to be desired, because he also creates the spiritual world, which is never-ending. Shauri carries the same foot dust on his thousand heads with, mu with much effort. Shauri is the thousand-headed serpent, Seshanaga, who is seen in association with Mahavishnu or Narayan. So this thousand-headed serpent carries all the planetary systems on his heads, and then he bobs and weaves and dances and like causes the motion of the celestial bodies. So this is nothing but the dance of Shauri. All astrology, all astronomy, cosmology, all this stuff huh? is simply the dance of Shauri carrying the foot dust of the goddess on his heads with much effort. Even though he's Vishnu, even though he is the god of the worlds who maintains the whole universe, still it takes a lot of effort <laughs> just to carry a little foot dust on his heads because she is so immense, she is so beyond the material creation. Huh? She is one with Shiva. Shiva Shakti, just two faces of the same God. The static and the dynamic, the yin and the yang. So try to understand, while Hara pulverizes that dust and smears his body with it, as though with ashes. He worships her. He's in love with her. Huh? Now, be honest with, with yourself. Don't you love yourself more than anything or anyone else? Huh? It's okay. It's not narcissism. It's just the way it is. So in the same way, Shiva loves his self, his goddess, his form his energy more than anything or anyone. So Shiva and Shakti are naturally made for each other. Huh? They're naturally in love. And even after everything else is destroyed, they remain. So one should aspire to be, uh, become a worshiper first a bhakta, a lover, then finally a, a direct servant of them because they are never destroyed at the end even of the cosmic manifestation. So that is a permanent situation. Uh, then it's blissful, it's wonderful, it's ecstatic. You can pretty much have any kind of form, any kind of activities, any kind of relationships that you desire because everything is there. And there's no distinction in that realm between good and bad, right and wrong, or whatever. Uh, everything is possible and everything is allowed. So there's, there's no discrimination. There's no uh, rejection of any kind of orientation or any kind of desires. It's all there in Shakti. So this is the second verse, and I just want to make a, uh, a little bit of uh, clarity, more clarity, about the, uh, the Sri Yantra, the verse Yantra, and the syllable, the mantra for the verse. So here, for example, is the Sri Yantra. This is the Sri Yantra that I have on my altar. It's gold-plated copper sheet stamped with the yantra and then painted or printed with the uh, names, the explanations of the various parts. And then on top of that, I superimpose the yantra. Here's the yantra for the first shloka, which is just a square with four circles at the corners. Similarly, there's a yantra for the second shloka, which is like an inverted triangle. Remember, this verse is about 
the triples, the triads. So it's three is very much emphasized. And with a trishul, a trishul is the trident of Shiva. Uh, you'll often see him holding this trishul and uh, sometimes using it in a fight. And so, of course, this is a sign of a triple. Huh? So we often, back in the days when I had disciples, we would use this as our secret greeting, you know. Om Shiva. <laughs> they didn't know about Shiva, though. They were hung up on Vishnu. But anyway, the triple is the sign of Shiva. Shiva and Shakti. And then finally, the mantra or the syllable for the second shloka is Hring. Now, Hring is a very deep mula mantra. And actually, we could devote an entire video just to explaining its meaning. But basically, what it means is Maya. This is the illusion. Actually, there is no such thing as duality or trinity. Actually, there is only Shiva. There is only consciousness. Nothing else really exists because nothing else is permanent. Everything else that seems to exist is always changing. It comes into existence, exists for some time, and then disappears or it transforms into something else. So these are not real existences. These are dependent existences. Dependent on what? Consciousness. Because without consciousness, nothing else exists, isn't it? When our consciousness is withdrawn from the world and we go into sleep at night and we see many different dreams, then we have no awareness at all of the external world. It might as well not even exist. It's gone, invisible. All we can see is our dreams, and then even the dreams pass away. And we have nothing but the self, Brahman, our awareness without any object. And that is the primordial state. We all experience it every night. And the sleep experiments have shown that if people are not allowed this deep sleep, in a few days they go crazy. <laughs> they suffer all kinds of stress-related conditions. So the, the point is, we have to experience our existence as Shiva, as Brahman, as pure objectless awareness every day or every night to remain healthy and happy. So this ring, uh, just like uh, the previous verse, the mantra was cling. Cling signifies desire and attaining the objects of one's desire. So in the same way, ring means transcending all desire and simply being in one's original state and maybe seeing the world or maybe not. Huh? But if one does see the world in that state, one realizes it as simply a, an appearance, a mirage, huh? a dream in Brahman, in pure consciousness. And therefore it cannot entangle him, cannot become attached to it. It's simply entertainment. Huh? It's God dreaming in his sleep. <laughs> so enjoy the world. Don't be hung up on it. Watch these videos, get the result, have a beautiful life, and then attain enlightenment. Hey, what could be better than that? Aung Tatsat. Aung Harihi Aung.